Um, so we are now uh, before the last talk of this day, and the speaker is Yoni Kasten. It is a joint work with Amnon, uh, Mirav Galum, and Ronen Batri from Weizmann Institute. Um, and the talk is about algebraic constraints on multi-view matrices. <clears throat> okay, so uh, thank you for uh, the introduction. And this is uh, indeed, a uh, my name is Yoni, and this is a joint work with uh, Amnon Geifman. Mirav Galun and Ronen Batri from uh, Weizmann Institute of Science. Global SFM using algebraic uh, constraints on multi-view matrices. And this talk is based on the following uh, three papers. One of them is from the last uh, CVPR, the second from the last ICCV, and another one which we submitted to archive. So I will start with a brief introduction for multi-view geometry and then we will get to our method. So a camera projection matrix is defined by a 3 by 4 matrix that projects from 3D to an image I, where KI is the calibration matrix of the camera, RI is the orientation of the camera, and TI is the position of the camera in the 3D coordinates. And given a 3D point X, this point can be projected to the image by multiplying it with the camera projection matrix. Given two cameras, we can define the following matrix, Fij. And this matrix is called the fundamental matrix. And it holds that Fij equals Fji transpose. And also that the rank of Fij is 2. And geometrically, given a point xi in image i, this point can be projected from any 3D point of the red ray but for each different 3D point, it will be projected to a different 2D point in image J. And all of them lie on the same 2D line, which is called an epipolar line. So FJI transforms XI from image I to an epipolar line in image J. And similarly, FIJ transforms XJ to an epipolar line in image I. And the corresponding points must lie on corresponding epipolar lines, and this can be expressed by the following algebraic constraint, xi transpose fij xj equals zero. And the, and the null space of fij is called the epipole point, and this is actually the projection of the other camera center, ti, to image j. And here you can see a visualization of corresponding points and corresponding epipolar lines between two images. And using this algebraic relation, F can be computed from point correspondences. And given the fundamental metrics, the camera matrices can be extracted and they are defined up to a global 4x4 homography. Now, this 4x4 homography gives a projective distortion that does not preserve angle, and we call it the uncalibrated case. But when we have calibration, which is the calibrated case, we can build a Euclidean reconstruction, which is defined up to a similarity transformation, and it does uh, preserve angles. And in this case, we, we can also normalize the image coordinates such that the calibration matrices are identity matrices, and this gives a spatial form for the fundamental matrix, which is called the essential matrix. And given the essential matrix, the cameras can be extracted and they are defined up to a global similarity transformation. And in structure for motion, we are given a set of images, and the challenge is to reproduce the cameras that captured the images together with a 3D reconstruction of the scene. And when we use two-view geometries, it is challenging to build the structure for motion. And here is an example. Suppose that we compute E12 and extract cameras 1 and 2. Then independently, we compute E23 and we extract camera 2 and 3. And then independently, we compute E13 and we extract cameras 1 and 3. But here, as you can see, Camera 3 has two different and inconsistent representations. So the challenge is to find three cameras which agree as much as possible with the measurements pairwise essential matrices. And this is called motion averaging. 
And basically, it reduces the number of degrees of freedom from the degrees of freedom of the essential matrices to the degrees of freedom of the cameras. And in this work, we assume that we are given a set of images with fundamental matrices computed between them. And our question is, what makes these fundamental matrices consistent with each other? And if they are not consistent, how can we average noisy measurements to camera matrices? So now we will show, uh, we'll show some uh, previous works for uh, structure for motion. So the main approach is called sequential structure for motion. And it starts with two images and build an initial reconstruction. And then cameras are added one, one by one until all the cameras are in the 3D scene. However, each time a new camera is added, bundle adjustment, which is a heavy computational process, needs to be applied. So these uh, pipelines are relatively slow. But several successful papers implemented such pipelines for both the calibrated setups and also for uncalibrated setups. Global structure for motion starts with uh, essential matrices, extract the relative rotations, and the first step, which is called rotation averaging, takes the uh, relative rotations and average them to absolute global rotations. Then, using the solved rotations and the relative translation, Translation solvers solved for the global translations. Finally, when all the cameras are known, 3D points are triangulated following by a one-time bundle adjustment. And here is a partial list for a rotation solver and translation solver. But we would like to avoid these two steps of rotation solvers and then translation solvers and we, we would like to uh, directly averaging the measurements, the noisy measurements, essential matrices to camera matrices. And in addition, we have the first uh, global approach that can average fundamental matrices. So now I will show some uh, theoretical uh, results. So suppose that we are given n images and we compute the fundamental matrices between them. Then we define the, the following block matrix when we put in the block IJ the fundamental matrices, the fundamental matrix between view I and view J. So we can put F12 in the matrix and F23 and so on. And then we get a matrix of size 3n by 3n, and we call this matrix the n view fundamental matrix. And since Fji equals Fij transpose, it follows that this matrix is symmetric and each non-diagonal block has rank two. And similarly, we define the n view essential matrix using essential matrices. So here we have also that each block has two identical singular values to form a valid essential matrix. And our first theorem says that um, an end view fundamental matrix is consistent with, with non collinear end cameras if and only if it has rank six with the following eigenvalue decomposition pattern of three positive and three negative eigenvalues. And also that the rank of Fi, the row blocks of F, is always three. Our second theorem says that an n-view essential matrix is consistent with non-collinear n cameras if and only if, in addition, we have that the three positive and three negative eigenvalues are actually three pairs of the same eigenvalues with positive and negative signs, and also that the three vectors corresponding to the positive eigenvalues plus the three vectors corresponding to the negative eigenvalues form a block rotation matrix. So we want to give an intuition for the rank six. So suppose that we know the camera matrices, then we can express EIJ using the camera matrices uh, of view I and view J. But then we can express the entire uh, N view essential matrix using the matrices U and V, which both has, have rank three. So E is actually the sum of two rank three matrices so the rank of E is bounded by six, and we prove that this has always rank six. 
For intuition for the rank 3 of the row blocks of F, assume that the rank of F1 is 2. Then it means that it adds an L space, but then it means that all the fundamental matrices in this block have the, sh the same epipole point, and it means that all the other cameras are projected to the same epipole point in image 1. But geometrically, it means that all the camera centers are, are on the same 3D line in the 3D coordinate system, so they are all projected to the same epipole point in image 1. And this brings us to our th a third theorem that says that an envious a fundamental matrix is consistent with collinear N cameras if it has rank 4 with two positive and two negative eigenvalues, and also that indeed the rank of Fi is 2. And our last theorem says that an NVU essential matrix is consistent with calling our N cameras if, in addition, the two positive and the two negative eigenvalues share the same absolute values. And we also have a special form for the sum of the eigenvectors corresponding to the positive eigenvalues and the eigenvectors corresponding to the negative eigenvalues. And more details and all the proof can be found in the papers. So in our algorithm, we would like to take a set of images, extract the fundamental matrix set, which form an NVU fundamental matrix, and then optimize this NVU fundamental matrix to be consistent NVU fundamental matrix, and then we can extract the cameras. But in practice, we have the following challenges. First, we have missing entries, because not all the pairs of images share a shared view. So the fundamental matrices cannot always be computed. In addition, the measurement fundamental matrix is defined for any scale because it is computed from points correspondence set. But the FIJ in the consistent NVU F has a specific scale followed from the camera matrix set. And optimize for the, this uh, scale factor is very challenging. But we prove that a three-view fundamental matrix is invariant to arbitrary scaling of its fundamental matrices, and also that under some conditions, given a set of three-view matrices, we can complete F uniquely to a consistent N-view matrix. So as a result, this is our pipeline. We start with images, we compute pairwise relations independently, so we get N-view fundamental or essential matrix. Then we compute a triplet cover of the NVU fundamental matrix, and we uh, optimize using ADMM for blocks of consistent three-view fundamental or essential matrices. And then the missing entries are, are completed uniquely. Then we can extract the cameras, and finally we perform bundle adjustment for a refinement. So let's see some uh, results. For the uncalibrated case, we tested our method on a benchmark of 25 cents, and we compared our method to the state-of-the-art methods. And as a, it is a common in uncalibrated setups, we evaluated the mean reprojection error, which means we're taking the uh, reconstructed camera, use it to project the reconstructed point, and then we measure the distance in pixels between the projected point to the measurement point. And as you can see, our errors in pixels are almost always better than the previous methods. And also, on the right, you can see that our running time is much faster than previous methods. And this is because this is the first global approach for uncalibrated structure for motion. Here is a visualization of one of the scenes after applying self-calibration. For the calibrated settings, our method outputs both rotations and translations of the cameras. So we first compared our rotations to the outputs of the rotation solvers. And you can see that for most of the cases, we get the best results in terms of camera angle error. For the translations, we compare our method to the translation solvers. And you can see that we almost always get the best results in terms of a mean error in meters after bundle adjustment. And for the running time, which is measured in seconds, you can see that our method is relatively fast, especially in the motion averaging time. 
tr plus t. So here you can see some of our reconstructions of the cameras and the 3D points. So a Kitty visual odometry data set contains images taken from a driving car. And as you can see, many sequences contains collinear motion of the camera mounted on the car. So uh, we ran our method on these sequences and compared our method to previous methods. And this is a very challenging case for global approaches. So here you can see one result. Uh, of the Kitty data sets of uh, 20 uh, sampled cameras. Uh, by green, we marked the ground truth positions. Our results marked in red, and LUD results marked in blue. And you can see that here we get better results uh, than LUD. But we have a lot of tables and different comparisons between uh, the different methods of many sampled cases from Kitty uh, data set of a driving car. So you can see the tables in the paper. So uh, to conclude, we completely characterized the condition required by a set of fundamental or essential matrices to be compatible with each other. We introduced a global method that reduces the projective of Euclidean uh, reconstruction. Our pipeline improved the state-of-the-art method in both accuracy and running time. And for future work, we would like to build a SLAM system that uses our method and also to combine our constraints in the deep learning pipelines. Thank you. Thank you, C, for this talk. Are there questions? If you have a question, please stand up because I can't see well from here. So I have a question. Um, I know that you have a long and detailed answer for that. So just give us the intuition. How do you overcome degeneracy between triplets of cameras? Mm -hmm. So actually, if two triplets share the same fundamental metrics, for example, there must be homography between the uh, two cameras of the shared triplet in the, in the uh, intersection of the two triplets, the two, the two cameras, and then this homography can be used to uh, transform between one triplet to another, and then it means that it has a unique reconstruction. Thank you. Um, so I would like to thank you again. Thank you again. And uh, before I conclude the day, this exciting day, I would like to acknowledge um, um, the sponsors and Tel Aviv University and obviously Shai and Raja uh, for putting everything together and making this day possible. And thank you for attending. Thank you all the speakers. <laughs>